Good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Stefan. How are you? Good morning, Jamie. Apparently, Zoom has a new UI. Yeah. <laughs> I just have an additional <laughs> row of things. Every otherwise everything else looks the same to me. Is it different on your end? Like uh yeah, there's definitely a different UI, a whole <laughs> fancy panel. Yeah, of stuff. the apps panel. It's too yeah. much like I don't know what I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, then, I'm not sure why I need apps for Zoom, but <laughs> well, <laughs> Zoom is Zoom, the history, Zoom has always made decisions upon the user's behalf. <laughs> that that <Yeah>. worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, anyway, sorry. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> How are things today? Ah, oh, here we are doing, um, yeah, once we get through the, uh, the technical marvel. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, right? I'm, I'm doing all right. I had a... I had something I need to check my notes. I had a, a little epiphany and then uh, I wrote it down, but obviously I've since forgotten because it was in a, you know, one of those early, early morning kind of half wake and half, yeah. half, half I awake love that you wrote states. it down. <laughs> well, I dictated it to Siri. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Take a second <laughs> to pull that up. No problem. So we'll, We'll yeah. pull it up and see if there's actually anything interesting there. Yeah, it's funny. I had a sort of a breakthrough this week as well. So, I mean, I don't know if we're, you know, yeah. mine's always, mine tend to revolve around parenting things, but I had a couple, a couple good wins this past week. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good today, but yeah, I want to wait and see what you wrote down before I start in any particular direction. Well, the epiphany I had was because I was in a dream that felt very real and plausible. And, and, and what I realized is that dream, the dreams generate emotions, right? We wake up with yeah. the emotions left over from that dream. Now we might forget, but throughout the, throughout the night, and when we're dreaming, we are having these emotions in the dream, whether they be wonder or fear or terror. And then if we don't have that bridge between the dream state and the awakened state, then we forget that we had all those emotions and our body had a whole experience, right? Like we had a whole experience throughout the night. Yeah. And in that regard, dreams are just as real as what we might call reality because they are affecting us emotionally yeah. right they are they are um energetically having an influence over who we are and how we how we approach our day even though we may not remember them that experience of the dream and that experience of the emotion happened and it may it may be reinforcing a fear or a terror or a or a really positive moment we had right and so and since we use our emotions as navigational mechanisms dreams can be pretty important yeah <laughs> yeah i i think that's interesting and like as you were talking i was kind of thinking about like my mind kind of expanded out on that in terms of like yeah, it's almost like a whole nother life. Well, you know, maybe maybe this state that we're in right now, what we call our awake state, is actually a dream state for other for dream Jamie. Dream Jamie's this is a dream for sleeping other Jamie. And then yes. yeah, you know, it's just our flip side. And then my, my dream state, what I call my dream state is a reality of it's not a dream over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I mean, if I combine this with the information that I that I learned years ago from Castaneda, is that this is all on one continuum. It's all part of our experience. It's just where we focus our attention. And I think the ultimate point, or the thing that I was trying to remember that morning, was that the dreams are just as real if we put real in quotes mm -hmm. as anything else and but ultimately dreams are 
they are a projection. They are an illusion like everything else, right? Like if we think of the future, that's still an illusion. The future doesn't exist. If we think of the past or have an emotional experience about the past, that's also an illusion. We're fabricating, we're retelling the story in our mind. We're telling the story about the future. We're telling a story about the past, right? Like, I mean, our, like if we make a vision board, if we make a plan for the future, that's a right. story we are telling about the future. If we're dreaming about something that is a dream in the same way that, a, that we have a dream about how our future is or what we want, want it to be, or we have a dream about the past because no recollection of the past is perfect, right? It's all based on point of view. And if we have a shared experience with each other, that experience, the way we remember it will not be the same from person to person, right? right. Like the details and what we focus on. So all of those things are paintings. The dreams are paintings, our plans for the future are paintings, our plans or our recollections of the past are paintings. And again, I, I, I'm just reminded all we really know and everything we have access to is from this point right here. Right. And um, when I said to myself, dreams are just as real as because they create these emotional experiences, what I'm really telling myself is that dreams are the same illusion as our plans of the future for the future and our plans and our, and our recollection of the past. Right. Oh, I, I like that. Right. Like it, it, there, it's all the same. It's all just part of this way that we create energy and emotion to motivate ourselves or to ch to focus our attention, right? Because emotion focuses attention. And the, and the thoughts and the way we pull ourselves into the future is by creating these paintings and then keeping our attention on the painting. But the painting is still an illusion, right? Like our, our vision board or our goal set or our daily task list that is still an illusion until we are actually in it, right. doing it, participating, or we have recognized that we are, we are in it. So I don't know what all that means, but it was one of those moments where I felt really clear about the, the, the illusory nature of life, how we are constantly painting beautiful or ugly pictures we're just painting pictures and then we are either moving toward those pictures or away from those pictures or we are living in those pictures this is an interesting that's an interesting thought um yeah huh <laughs> I just have to process that one. I'm like, huh. interesting though yeah I, I, yeah, I got to spend some time on that one because I, I do, you know, I mean, when you reference like the vision board or, you, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing because I think it's important to have those visions. And when I, I think where my brain is kind of like, okay, you know, kind of processing what you were saying, but differences, maybe um, dreams that happen while I'm asleep in quotes, um, or vision board, which is like a aspirational existence. And um, it, it's interesting. It's interesting, man, I'm not even sure where I'm at with this. It, it's one of those things where I think about the difference. And I'm like, why is it different? Is there a way to bridge the gap between them? I mean, I'm aware of you know, that a lot of folks will talk about like lucid dreaming and being able to have awareness during your dream and, and dictate what happens while you're there. Right. And, um, anyway, it's interesting because I, I, I feel a reality in, in a sense, in the way you've described it too, like, I'll just use like goals as an example for me, I've had like a really interesting 
track record maybe of when I've written things down how the, the reality manifests somehow and it's like I'm like oh I have a magic notebook or whatever you know I have a, a magic notebook that makes my my goals and aspirations come true and they don't always happen like instantly it's not like a movie where they make a wish and then the genie grants the wish or anything like that but it's like I've had I mean really interesting things that like I wrote you know I wrote down in order to have this existence I need this and then um you know it was almost like a pathway to a destiny but not so specific not really specific it's just like these are some things that obstacles that I would need to overcome in order to be here and here is the place I want to exist and within a couple of years bam done you know and it was I think it's just like that clarity of vision um having any clarity of vision helps you arrive at, at the destination. It's a roadmap or a compass. Like we talked about it's um, yes, in a way uh, it's a compass, right? It's a yeah, energetic yes. pull, but it is a painting. Right. And then we, and then we, what we use, we use the painting to focus our attention on and, and the actually, and the more general the painting is the more options there are to actually move toward the painting. Right. Like if the painting is very specific, exactly then you get stuck on focusing on things that may not really matter to getting you to that place so that the these paintings create thoughts mm -hmm. right the elements in the paintings are created out of thoughts or they are part of thoughts but ultimately they are all linked to emotions right like i want to feel that i want to be in that place where i have this and this and this i want to go go to that place and see what it's like because i've been to similar places or i or some part of me feels it right all of these things we navigate towards these things by feelings positive or negative right it's like yeah. the stove is hot don't touch it or the drink is cold and it'll feel good right like like they're very uh, they're and ultimately it's very basic do i like this or do i do i not like this does this feel good or not feel good and the the pictures or these illusion i don't i don't want to use the word illusion as a negative term mm -hmm. but it is a magic trick just like you said maybe if we it is a magic trick like your book is a magic trick right it's focusing way, attention it's like a, yeah yeah and a good magician, a really good magician, can uh, can focus an entire audience on what they imagine is a completely improbable result, right? You've seen these um, um, mentalists, right? Like the yeah. great uh, magician mentalists can, can focus through very subtle means, very general, broad, and some very specific means, focus an entire audience on a completely improbable result. And the mm -hmm. whole audience, yeah. thousand, three thousand people will go, oh my gosh, that's Im impossible. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I want to use the, maybe the term illusion, not in negative, in a negative way, but in this kind of painting a picture or magic, like your word of muse having your magic notebook is really great. But I think the important part is, is that in dreams at night, in dreams at night, or in stories that we tell of the past, what we're doing is we're going, we're, the dreams at night, they're, ne they're generating feelings, um, maybe out of our control or as a way of sorting through stuff. And I have done lucid dreaming uh, work and I don't think I had enough brilliant ideas to bring with me into the dream. And also <laughs> what I found, <laughs> I mean, I did some things like flying around a neighborhood and that was really cool. And I did things that, that um, were fun and felt good but I don't know that I practiced it enough to actually set the setting. Usually what happens is I arrived in the dream and the setting was already set. 
And so then it was just like, oh, well, what can I do with this setting? Let's see how far I can take it. And then eventually I'd wake myself up because I was just goofing around too much. Or when I, the early on in this lucid dream, because these are all tricks. These are all things that people can learn to kind of bridge this space between wake and sleep and then be lucid in the dream. What I found initially when I was trying these techniques is that I would do the technique. One of the techniques is I am dreaming, I am dreaming, I am dreaming. So you just recite, I am dreaming while laying in bed. And eventually I would be asleep and I would be in a dream and I would still be retreat, repeating, I am dreaming. And then I go, oh my gosh, I really am dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucid yeah. in a dream. But I was so excited that I'd wake myself up. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, I've had moments of that, but never extended moments and never, um, yeah, like I've never, I guess, practiced it to the extent where I can, there are sometimes moments in dreams that you really want to hang on to or revisit or we wish they lasted longer after you, after you awake. And I, I never really got a handle on if that's, that's a thing that I could do is actually bring those moments back in an, in a future dream or, um, yeah, you know, yeah, th those are interesting moments that like, I, I remember thinking like, man, I would love to revisit that one or that dream. That dream was great. And I would love that again or whatever, but yeah, like, but never being able to like, even having an awareness in the moment in the dream, but then not really knowing what to do with it in that moment. And yeah, that has been yeah. my experience. So yes. Like well, well I think all of that takes practice based on what I learned from Stephen LaBerge, uh, uh, who came here years ago to Seattle. We had a neurotechnology conference, a couple of neurotechnology conferences, but he came up here from, and he was the, this was in the 90s, probably in the 90s. And he came up here to Seattle to, uh, for this neurotechnology conference, and he, he shared all of his research on lucid dreaming and all of the things they were trying to understand. And then... He basically just gave us a list like here's how you do it here's how you get into the here's a cup here just try this out and so i had a whole list of things in a notebook but ultimately there's so much going on here and we are already i mean spending the energy to try to work on our dream state is the same amount of energy that you could spend That's... focusing on the waking state and that yeah. was my that was my ultimate that is kind of where I conclusion too, is like, I just want to sleep. I want to wake up and feel rested. I have had dreams where you wake up and you feel exhausted and like, well, I don't yes. want this. I don't want to wake up feeling tired. Like, yeah. Anyway. So yeah, well, I, I had a similar conclusion in that regard. Well, that is the random nature of dreams too. We don't necessarily know what our psyche is working out um, during the night, but the point of the dream is to uh, and the point of the sleep state is to help us function better the next yeah, day right exactly and if i'm exhausted and, uh, <laughs> i'm spending all my energy in the sleep state that's no good yeah well so i guess for me the the usefulness of use lucid dreaming um is it's a wash for me. I, I don't know. I don't know that there, I, I guess I imagine that there are many other ways that I can get to where I want, but I think the key for me in all of this is that no matter where we are, we are generating feelings, right? Like even in our sleep, we are generating feelings and they affect us. So if we have a bad dream or a nightmare, those feelings carry with us. They're distracting. They, you know, they take energy. Yeah, during the sure. day so that so the trick is in our waking state to be clean and to understand what we're feeling so that we don't take those feelings and those sublimated um, issues into our sleep state because <laughs> our sleep state will try to work them out <laughs> oh it does indeed for sure 
Yeah. Right. And so it's, uh, uh, and we may not have a restful night of sleep. Right. I mean, I've woken up, um, with panic attacks and, you know, in my younger years, before I really knew how to address my own terror and my own uh, existential fear, um, I would go to bed fearful, thinking that I would have right that I would that I would uncover some even deeper fear. Yeah, yeah. Right, like that, and then and then wake up in the middle of the night and go holy fuck that's fear, <laughs> that's, fear. Oh, that fear generated more fear uh, there is a demon trying to separate my abdomen from my rib cage right <laughs> right <Yeah>. now <laughs> yeah man yeah i've had a few of those where you wake up out of breath or yeah uh, yeah man like all too real sorts of things man well, that again, this is, this is my point. It is real because it's gener right. It, right. Because the feeling, although, the waking up, yeah, I get it. It, it's, it, it uh, may be, it may be irrational, but it's generating a real event in yeah. our being. In our whether the thoughts. what, whether the thoughts and whatever the sublimated fear or anger or confusion, whatever those things are, that are collected and whirling around whether those are illusory or not the the material manifestation of sweat tension uh um upset right like the stomach upset whatever it is me i would have abdominal incredible abdominal tension like cramping and as if i were giving birth which i will I will not try to claim that it's even close, but that, that, that is what I could have imagined. Like I'm giving birth to a demon, right? It's like, it's <laughs> fun stuff, man. Well, so uh, what do, what, what do you do with it, with this, with this, this awareness of, well, of I, energy I, and, and well, again, I, th I think it's so important to be aware of what we are thinking and what we are carrying with us in the moment because that's what's painting the pictures that's what's taking the energy into our sleep state that's what's deciding that energy is even what's deciding what kinds of stories we tell ourselves about our past right if we feel uncomfortable in a social situation, we will maybe tell ourselves a story about all the other times we were uncomfortable in a similar situation, or we may just focus on how uncomfortable we are instead of maybe focusing on something else or being open to whatever's happening in the situation or just getting the fuck out of there, right? Yeah. Like there are all these things pulling us in other directions, right? Like the moment we have a thought, we have an emotion, and then it takes us somewhere. If we can free ourselves of these thoughts or be aware that they're there and let them go as they're churning up and be more open to being present and allowing and feeling safe and acknowledged, and um right like if we give ourselves safety acknowledgement and just a little bit of control like i can be here or i don't need to be here so yeah. it's up to me but let's hang out and see what's here in this yeah. moment for yeah, me interesting. so i don't i i don't i don't ultimately no, but it was just a, a clear, I think these things, when they happen, they're so clear I think when, that's... when they happen, they're so clear that there's no real way to articulate, you know, to articulate um, how it might affect me, but it is, it's a level of comfort. It increased my level of comfort with who I am in any given moment. That's really interesting too. I think 
You know, I think the moment that you talked about there, it, it's like, there are these moments of clarity that happen, right? Or a moment, like, I think that I referred earlier, I was like, I had like a breakthrough this week or, or whatever, right? Like there are these moments where you, you just feel like, you know what, that was progress and I feel it. I feel it like all the way to my core and I, I feel it. And I, um, I mean, so I think we talked a little bit last week, like I'd had a breakthrough moment with uh, my daughter Zia, right? With uh, honesty. And I was like, well, we had, you know, I, I, are you stoned? And she said, yes. So I'm kind of like in this conflicted moment of like, well, I'm like super stoked that you were honest with me, but at the same time, I'm not super pleased about the reality of this situation, but whatever, I'm going to choose to focus on the breakthrough. And we had another really um, interesting one this week that I would qualify as even bigger. Um, and I, I don't know if like, I'm trying to think of how much is okay to share here and not necessarily because of Zia or her, her, Okay, so let me just start with like, maybe this should have a trigger warning because I'm gonna cover some territory here that may be sensitive for some folks. And it covers kind of a, a, a wide range of things from uh, kids to uh, suicide mention to um, there's even, I'm gonna mention child pornography, but not in great depth. So I just wanna cover that. But so here's a thing that happened this week. Um, I was, going to pick up Zia from school on Monday, just the, the bus stop, you know, but like I was picking up Sophia from her job at Crumble and then we race over to the bus. It's just like, you know, it's kind of like we're bustling, but nothing stressful or, or, or pressure filled. It's just like, we've got our things to do. And um, while I'm in transit from the picking up Sophia from her job over to the bus stop, my phone starts going off like I had a phone call and I don't answer things while I'm driving but my it was like a phone call and then a phone call again and I know the number of Zia's school very well so it's her school but I can't pick it up right now because I'm driving so I'm like they'll voicemail and I can call back or whatever and um and then I see a text message from their dad the you know the girl's dad and I'm just like whoa boy what's going on so I'm like Sophia can you just pick up my phone and see what your dad's texting about and she was like uh oh something about Zia and cyberbullying and um so, and that you need to call <laughs> right right away and then so I'm like all right I'll call when I get stopped at the bus stop and um anyway it was really, it was basically it was like this. 30 minutes until I could, I would be back home at a place where I could have a conversation, from, do call the principal and find out what's going on. So I, I call, I ask Z though, when she gets off the bus, I'm like, Hey, just got a call about cyberbullying. What's going on? She's like, Oh, it's probably about that video that I told you about last week. I was like, what video? And she's like, remember on Friday when I told you there was a kid that some, he was, he was masturbating in class and somebody videoed it and oh, it got shared. Geez. And so, um, and so, okay. So I'm like, oh, right. I, she had mentioned it, but it, you know, I, it didn't even occur to me that like, I, I was like, did you share the video? <laughs> and she goes, well, it was sent to me in a private message via Instagram direct message. And she goes, and my friend was right in the background. So I, I forwarded it to her and said, Do, are you aware that this is happening? report it or get somewhere safe, you know, like you shouldn't be next to this, this is happening. And, you know, just 13, these kids are 13 and, you know, there's, there's a whole lot going on in this story. No, right? but she, no, but she was, she was concerned, concerned and uh, yeah. And it was, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, you know, but that context wasn't out yet. It was, it was, you know, um, what I got, I get a message from the principal that is your child has uh, been identified as distributing child pornography. Please call us immediately. So oh, that's geez. the message I get from, you know, Jesus. the school and there, that's the message their dad got. So he's panicked and this is a criminal offense. And so like, it, it was interesting. So I received this call and, you know, the focus is all about this is a criminal offense. This is, you know, and, and like, I just like, okay, we're, we'll have a talk 
And, and then also I will throw out that my, my child does have a history of being called to the office last year in particular, I think I was the course of the year, but this year we had a really clean year, like a really good year. Um, you know, and so, but this, because I think of this past record, it's very easy to throw my kid under the bus when something goes awry, probably your kid, you know, and, and I, and I am the, I am not one of those, not my kid. My kid would never, I'm not one of those parents. I will own it immediately because I know (laughs) that it might be my kid, you know? Um, and so I, I asked Z her side of the story and then, you know, like I, I, I call the school back, I get all of this, like sort of, and I'm like, okay, I will, you know, like I'll talk to my child, I'll get her side. I'll find out what's going on and we'll follow up. And she's like, well, she'll, she'll be called in for an interview and to fill out a report tomorrow. And so like Z and I spent about an hour talking and then we had to, you know, drive to school of rock. We had other things kind of going on. I spent some time talking to their dad and then I shared with Ken, everything that was going on. He was at the shop the whole time, but here's what I absolutely loved about the conversation with Ken is that he had the sort of the space between you know, just like the, that, that clarity of distance to look at everything in a bigger picture, right? Like, I feel like the, the principal called and has me focused here. And that's what, you know, Z's focus is kind of here to like, here's my side of the story. Like, I didn't really think about it as child pornography. Like I didn't occur, this is some kid in my, not even in her class. She wasn't even there. She saw her friend and anyway, you know, so, but Ken has the sort of clarity to go, well, why aren't they offering counseling instead of threatening police? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, you know, and and I was just like, wait, yeah, that that statement helped me kind of take a step back and go, yeah, like, wait, where, why aren't we looking at the bigger picture here? I mean, clearly, you know, like, I think it's a, it, even the principal is like, this is a kid that needs help, not to, you know, not all of these problems. And like, yes, I understand that, but there's also a trauma surrounding having witnessed it too right like like well having wit there there, there's a trauma i mean there's a (laughs) trauma there's a lot of layers well yeah there's a trauma surrounding having witnessed it but the trauma is like for kids for kids it's just like oh that kid is just doing what kids do but he's doing it in public which is inappropriate right so that kid that kid needs to needs to write counseling needs some help needs some rules but then but the adults have made it a crime exactly right? and that's the what adults said have too. made it a crime it's not like these kids aren't looking at it the way we're looking at it like as no. child porn this isn't child pornography to a kid this is one of their peers doing something like really a little embarrassing in, in the words of you know other 13 year olds and yeah. You know, and yeah, and like them, it's either, you know, anything that's on video, it, it's it, once it's yeah. been shared one single time, it's wildfire. And then, and, you know, anyway, yeah. I felt like my kid was being singled out as the distributor. I'm like, my kid wasn't even in the room, first of all. My kid received this second hand, not even from the person who had sent, you know, recorded it. And yeah. it was just like really, you know, I, I think after we had a couple of conversations back and forth, the principal finally was like, I think we're at a point now where I've gone far enough down the rabbit hole that I can figure out where the source of the video is. And then, um, you know, it's like, she's trying to mitigate the spread, but it's too late. This thing went out on Friday. This is Monday. <laughs> it's it's just, too late. Yeah. Yeah. And it was late. a very un- all of the breakthrough. The breakthrough for me was in my conversation with Zia. The breakthrough for me there was, you know, just asking her like, so what's your side of the story, right? And and then when she told me her side, I was like, okay, like I'm cross-checking because I do have to, I have to question how much I can trust Zia's stories from past experiences. I have to be careful how, uh, and this is just, you know, I've been lied to and lied to and lied to. So it's, it's as a parent, as a parent, I am familiar with the process. Yeah. Okay. So like (laughs) in all, uh, in all senses of reason, I know that I I need to question thoroughly 
Um, and then, sure. and, and so like when I hear a side of the story, my default, so we're just have dialogue, right? And I'm like, like, I'm thinking like, you know, the principal leaves me with all these things, like, you know, you should question whether they have a phone and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, you know, what? I'm not feeling that like in my gut, I'm not feeling like I should question if you should have your phone or not. We've been through phone issues and this is not that to me. This is, um, this is different. Like, this is just different. And all, all I need to know is that I have the whole story from you and that I have the truth from you and that I'm not missing anything. You say you shared it with one person. Did you share it with only one person? And yes, you know, she was like, yes. So she's like, you could you know, go through my stuff. And she's like, it was deleted immediately. Like after I shared it with her, she shared it with her friend and, um, and I haven't shared it with anybody since. And this was what the words that I wrote was something like this. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, like, I feel like I have a clear picture. And I feel like, like if I were a lawyer in this, you know, I was just thinking like, I want to have your back. I just need to make sure I know the whole story that nothing's going to surprise me. If the police were to take your phone and go through it, which has happened to us before, I don't want to be surprised by anything that they may find. And, um, and she's like, there's nothing for me to hide here. Like I have, you know, nothing. And so that to me was a massive breakthrough in our relationship. And that felt so good and to, to be clear i want to make a point here because i know <laughs> some of the other stories is yeah. the police weren't going through the phone because your daughter is a criminal no um, in all in yeah. in all in all instances so i just want to all be clear instances, about yes. that right. thank you for but, for bringing yeah, that up i want to be clear about that because <laughs> because the the reason the police were going through her phone was because there were other people being criminals and she yep. happened to get wrapped up in it. Yep. And so I just want to be clear about that. We're <laughs> yes. not, we're not painting, we're not painting any picture as to where Jamie's daughter is a criminal. Right. Like these things happen. These things are happening to children. Children are time. getting involved in crimes that adults are trying to commit um, because children are innocent and they have access to digital technology that can connect them with anyone in the world and exactly. they are curious and they're supposed to be curious exactly but you know what that was something i said to her i was like like in my just kind of sorting out i was like you know where i've landed on this is i don't think there is a consequence that i need to instill on you i was like i my biggest fear in this is be like that your curiosity is smashed out of you. And I don't want that. I don't want that to be stripped from you. Um, I don't want you to be fearful. Like I feel like we've actually built communication. This is two instances in a row where I felt like we had honesty. And then, you know, like she, I, I was like, do you want to come to the school of rock drive or, or not? And she's like, is it okay if I just stay here and, and just, I just need some time. And I was like, absolutely, 100%, like take some time. And then um, the next day we went to school, but she she texted me about two hours into school. And she's like, can I come home? Like, I just, I'm not sure I can do this today. She's like, I felt, I filled out the report and, and whatnot. So yeah, I went and got her. I went and picked her up from school and brought her home. And we just had a great, we just had great um, open down to earth yeah. conversation, you know? Well, you had her back. And also the yeah. thing that she's seeing is that people jumping to judgment, Yeah. right? Like she's seeing how the world jumps to judgment and that's yeah. dangerous. It's not safe as a kid to constantly be faced with jumping to judgment. I mean, there's enough yeah. judgment that children put on themselves just by being on Instagram and yeah. right. And, and the, but when when people who are supposed to be your guardians, like yep. the principal, like the teachers, like the school system, where that's supposed to be your safe place. Yeah. And then the entire system jumps to judgment. Oh my God, these, all these kids, yeah. any kid who happen to have that end up on their phone is, is, a, as some kind of offender right and that's... right some kind of child pornography offender when it's like mm, you know and i'm sure there's a lot of churchy people out there who sure. would like to have all those all those children burned at the stake sure 
but this it's is easy to throw stones when your focal point is myopic. And I think yeah. if you can step back and look at the whole picture and you know, I want to read what text, um, what she sent me was Zia sent me while I, you know, I was waiting in the car for her sister to be done with her school of rock. And, um, she wrote, she wrote this to me. She said, thank you for being so easy to work with on stuff like this. It's nice. <laughs> It's nice to have someone who can understand my point of view instead of just shaking me for what I did wrong, other than all the other things wrong in the situation. Most of this is messed up in many ways. Anyway, I just thought- Wow, that was well, a... that's beautiful. That's heartbreaking and beautiful. Yeah, that was, I was like, I feel like we made some massive progress. Like oh, that yeah. was a glorious- Texture. Yeah. <laughs> and what a what a mature what a mature way for her to express that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that was that's a that's a heart it's a heartbreaker that she needs to be that mature, but yeah. she is. But she I mean she her response is extreme like I don't know that I would get that response from uh, you know from uh, the majority of the people I work with yeah right because it's very it's very forward looking too like the message the message is is i look forward to working with you in the future yeah when these tough things come up exactly and that was kind of like so that's been my focus for a while now right is like i'm like like we've had turbulence in behavior stuff you know getting called to the office for this or that like we've definitely... i just got something in my eye oh <laughs> you're not teary <laughs> it's beautiful no, yeah it it's... is but it's um you know we've we've had our our like i i've been through zia and i have been through so much together and i don't i think i, I really appreciate you highlighting it you know like even our 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 visits from the police like we've had you know, we've had, we've been through so much, you know, the suicide lifeline, it was one of the reasons we had the police visit our house was so she called the suicide lifeline shortly after the pandemic kicked off. And which you know, is, she did the right thing. She did, the, she right did thing. the right thing. She called out for help where she didn't know what to do. Yeah. Right. Or who but to then, talk to. And, but then all of a sudden your family became criminals. Yeah. It, and right? it felt like it. And, you know, we never, I, and I never treated her like it was a bad thing that she did. It was the right thing to do. That That's what you do. And thank goodness she did so that we knew that, that there was stuff that we needed to work through because it was just like, everything's fine. Everything's cool. You know, that was the, the, the outer shell, right? It was, that was the presentation that I was given. Yeah. But so I didn't even know anything was wrong. It was just, no. you know, taken completely by surprise, but I, we have worked through so many of these things and to be at this point now, you know, so often the focus is like, I just need you to be honest with me. Like if you can be honest with me and I know, I know I've been a kid. Sometimes you don't need your parents to know all the information, (laughs) but there is a level of trust where, and this is all I've ever tried to communicate with her is if you can give me the facts, I can have your back. And like, yes. if you made mistakes or whatever, like that's going to happen. Like, I'm going to love you anyway. You know, like, I, don't, I make mistakes still all the time. There's none of us are perfect, but like, I accept you for your mix, mistakes, but I need your honesty. Um, in, if I'm going to have your back, I need to not be surprised by things. And that, I think that's what really helped her. I, I, th- I feel like we're getting somewhere, you know, and it's been a long road, but I feel like I feel like we've had two really, really big breakthroughs in the past couple of weeks. And yeah, I, I just I feel yeah, amazing well, about that. Well, that, I mean, her, her text message to you says it all, right? It's like, it's very, it's very professional, right? It's <laughs> yeah, like a very high, she's it's a very, very mature. It's kid. very high level acknowledgement of, you know, working with me because it is something to work through and it it deserves that that text message deserves to be celebrated for sure yeah because it's it's a it's a a really strong acknowledgement of the trust that you've built that you can be her advocate 
Yeah. And that you, yes. not that you she can, that you be. are, that you yes. are her, that you are her advocate and you will continue to be her advocate. And all you need is information. Exactly. You don't, you don't need to prove <laughs> whether she's right or wrong. You don't need, all you need is information. Exactly. And we then, can navigate can, the situation, like whatever yeah. it is, we'll figure it yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that happened. <laughs> yeah. So that happened. <laughs> so that happened. And it was, you know, it, it was interesting to, I don't know, like, you know, we talk a lot about how, like, I don't know, the universe, like, I, I love the phrase. I heard it somewhere. I can give it a proper quote, but the universe will conspire to help you. And sometimes I feel like, like, that's exactly what happened this week. Like, for whatever reason, I had the most non busy day in the world yesterday, it was easy for me to step away, go pick her up from school. It was easy this morning, she missed the bus. And you know what, I was like, I'll drive you. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Like, yes, I have to get up a little sooner, you know, <laughs> we have to drive a little further, but whatever, like, it was fine. Anyway, I, I really appreciate that. Like, my life has that comfort in it right now that that's the space I am living in right now. And yeah. so when things kind of come in that are unexpected, there's space to breathe and space to step away and space to think about it and, and think about the feeling you want to get out of it. Right. Like to, to feel how, I mean, even driving Z to school, um, I, I remember just sitting in the car. She was like doing her makeup in the car. And um, we were sitting outside the school waiting for time for her to go in. We had 15 minutes or so. And I remember just sitting there. The sun is coming up. The sky is beautiful. The car is warm. It's cold outside. <laughs> I don't know. Everything just felt nice. Like it mm -hmm. felt tranquil. And I, I said that to her. I was like, everything feels really right right now mm. and she was like it's not so bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh, it's like uh, bill murray so i got that going for me yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it just um what a good i don't know what a good thing what a good thing yeah well that's a beautiful it's a beautiful story and it's a beautiful outcome yeah. and to be in the moment and then to understand that 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 uh that that feeling is possible right like that's that like when you say the universe conspires to help us it's like we don't even need to figure out the solution no what we need to remember is that feeling like I want to get to that feeling of calm and clarity and I know it's out there. And so how do I get there? What are the, what's the easiest way to get there? Even if I can just remember that feeling and then just ask a question, ask an open-ended question about what might be next or how does Zia feel or how, how do I solve this problem? with this employee or it's going, trying to remember that pay, place of peace and clarity and going, I'm not looking for a material solution for this problem. I don't, I don't need to figure out the exact path to get to the solution. But what I need to remember is that the path to the solution is paved with this feeling of calm, clarity, curiosity, and thoughtfulness, right? Like taking in information because the solution is in the information we take in. The solution isn't in the projection of how we're gonna solve it. The solution is in taking the information in and then the solution assembles itself if we are calm enough, clear enough, and aware enough, all the information is there to pave this 
path. And the other thing that you stated was like, you had time, right? You gave yourself time to be calm and clear. You didn't have a big pile of uh, material tasks to do or that were distracting you from actually being present. Yep. And that's that's the thing that we've talked about quite often is that everything we need is in the present. If we yeah. could only be aware enough, right? Like be calm enough, clear enough, and then asking questions and listening from that place gives us the best information. And it, it also welcomes that person into that space, right? Yeah. The moment someone is labeled a criminal or the moment someone is labeled as wrong or judged or placed in a box, then we're never going to get the information we need from that place because they don't have access to the truth. And when they're put in a box, they only have access to their, you know, we only have access to our defense mechanisms, our frame. We only have access to the most uh, defensive of frameworks when we are, when we are put on the defensive. Yeah. And so what happens when we are in that place, if I'm in this place of being open and calm and clear and doesn't even need to be happy, I think, I think uh, peacefulness or satisfaction trumps happiness. Yeah. Right. Because even then you don't need to judge the moment. You're just like, ah, oh, this is it. I'm this is calm. Yeah. It's it's pure. It's I, I don't need to judge it as happy or anything. It's exactly. just is. There's just this space. It feels like and, and this goes back to I think, oh, it's been a while, but we had this conversation about that tree that fell in my back like my backyard. And then when the tree fell, I could see the mountain again and I had forgotten how nice that is just to be able to see way in the distance this beautiful mountain range that it's beyond my house and um I hadn't seen it for years because this tree had it, the tree was beautiful too but when it was gone I didn't miss it because it, it was just this vast open view which I'd had when I first moved into the house and kind of forgotten <laughs> that I loved it <laughs> yeah but it's that feeling though that that same feeling like I remember you know I think I I just remember doing dishes at my sink and looking up at the big open window at the back of my house and seeing these fountains and the same feeling that I felt when I was sitting in the car the, this morning with Z just kind of going like this just feels nice like, I don't, yeah, I don't know that I even have to label it. I just, this is the feeling. And it's, yes. I had that feeling, you know, in the onion house in Hawaii too, where we were just sitting and had nowhere to go or be and no pressure of any sort. Just, it just felt nice. I felt the space around me that I had time to look around and feel it and take it in and, and give it back out too, you know, <laughs> it was that. Yeah. No, yeah, no judgment. No judgment. No judgment needed. No attachment. Right? No, uh, no distraction. Even um, it, it's just clear and open. And the zone. Nice. That's yeah. the zone, right? That's the that's the place. Like if we could operate, if we could operate from that place of clarity, of peace, of. Uh, satisfaction right like it's a uh maybe a broader word than happy or anything else right. it's, it's just like this is enough this is ev- this exactly. is enough this is everything <laughs> this, yes this is enough and this is everything right that um i just have to make some notes yeah because yeah it, it, it's interesting to feel those moments too and there are they're long moments. They're not just a, a wink, you know, or a blink. <laughs> it's it's like they're they're moments that happen long enough for me to kind of take awareness, take note, and uh, feel it. Yeah. Yes, I am. I am reminded of that. The when we had a discussion about this too of my, the one day where I went out sailing. Yeah. The the and, boat. Yeah. Yeah. That moment where 
I wasn't thinking like nothing in the world existed, but that moment. And yeah. it was enough. It was more than enough. And it was, it was everything. Like I felt like there's no other place I need to be. There's no other place I want to be. This moment is, well, this moment, the series of moments is perfection. Like for an hour or two while I was out there sailing around, the nothing else in the world mattered, but I felt like I was connected to everything that mattered. Yeah. Right. Like uh, the, so it was, uh, it was kind of a paradox, right? Like I don't care about what's happening in the rest of the world. People stuck in traffic on the bridges and you know, that I can, I can see, two major highways from, you know, from the lake where I'm sailing, like a yeah. the giant I-5 bridge and there's traffic on it. And it, like none of that mattered. Yet also I felt connected to everything I needed, right? It's a paradox in a way. It's like, uh, and the, in, and we've, we've also talked about this cause it's the, it's a, it's an Eastern or a Buddhist concept, everything and nothing. All right. Like you, yep. like, like you, you are, you, there is everything and then there is nothing and you are in that place. That's it. And that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I mean, man. Yeah. I, I feel like, um, yeah, I want more of that. And it was, it's, it was neat to have that experience again. And in that way, my headphone feels painful today for some reasons. Adjust there. Well, <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, that brings up the question of how do we carry that? Like, or how do we celebrate that? Or how do we keep remembering that that state is available? Right. Like, like you've had, you've had, such a strong like like your description is such a strong experience emotionally and and i think celebrating it mm -hmm. talking about it and reminding ourselves of it and then the trick is is how do we remember that that is a state that we have access to and that state is super powerful right because anything you resonate from that state that's part of the magic trick, right? Like it's, <laughs> it is. Right? It's it part absolutely of absolutely <laughs> is. And yeah, it, it is interesting because I feel like, um, oh man, I got to bust out the magic notebook again. <laughs> you know, yeah. what's interesting about the, the magic notebook are, are making notes of, making notes of moments like this, like the, the doodle journal for me, um, is sort of a way of documenting when things happen. Um, but like, it's not just documenting when things happen, but also documenting, um, what I would, the dream with the vision kind of like thing, right. The vision board, uh, approach. It's like, I've, I've learned if I've learned anything, it's that I, when I envision how I want things to be, it manifests, you know, not, not without effort or work or, or whatever, but it, it does find its way. Like the, the universe, it's out there, as you said. And I think that the, the work for me or the practice for me has been not limiting, um, it's like, it's almost like my mind doesn't know how to think as big or as openly as it needs to. <laughs> it's like, I, sure. I'm self-restricting, but I, I'm not really sure how to not do that yet. I'm navigating through that. Well, the, I, I believe that if let, let's say let's say for let's say for grins that that moment where this is enough and this is everything where we are just feeling deep satisfaction 
in our circumstance with our friends, our family, with just any moment where we are out in the world. Yeah. And if we truly believe that this is enough and this is everything, then there are a million things we could be doing to get to that, right? Like you were just driving your kid to school and you yeah. had that. Yeah. Now, wh what gave you that? What, what, what helped you get to that moment? Well, it was, it was that you've given yourself in a lifestyle where you have more free time to think and to be and to, and to exercise your creativity. And so that free time spilled over into being with your daughter. And you arrived at this moment. Now, you could have any career you wanted or any career you desired. You could have any, you could be living anywhere in the world and you could still generate, you could still be in that moment of this, this is enough and this is everything right like that moment could be generated through any career or any lifestyle in any location because it's just dependent on you being aware enough to recognize that it's there yeah right well, and that that's it's available exactly. and so your so your magic notebook your magic notebook could have anything in it your magic <laughs> notebook could take you anywhere in the world you could paint any picture you want because you know that you could access that. So it's not, it's not so important that your magic notebook, obviously, we've talked about this, that you figure everything out in your magic notebook right. about what you want, if indeed what we want is to be, have that every day, every moment feeling of this is everything and this is enough. I mean, I think it's such a beautiful way to look at it and so then it's then that ultimately becomes this incredible spiritual quest of how can i live in this space yeah. of this is everything and this is enough and take that into all my relationships take that into all my creative pursuits take that into my business pursuits so that other people start to feel this kind of everything and enough and wow, isn't this beautiful what we're experiencing together? Because that feeling, it only exists in the present. It doesn't exist in the magic notebook. It doesn't exist in the meeting we schedule a week from now. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in the stories we tell about our past, right? Like the only, the only place you experience it is here in the present, right? Like you can, you can recall it like as mm. we are, but recalling it is different than actually that moment of sitting in the car with your daughter or me sitting on the sailboat, you know, being on the sailboat for an hour or two and just having it, having it wash over me. Yeah. And so, so to me, that's like, there are a million ways to get there and all of them are valid. All of yeah. them are beautiful and all of them are valid. And so then it just comes down to if this truly, you know, because other people may have different goals, but for me, that feeling that you just described I don't care what I'm doing in my life. If I can carry that feeling with me every day, uh, it doesn't matter what I'm doing to me. It doesn't, right. you know, like it doesn't, because that is everything and that is enough. And that makes everything better. It resonates into everything I do and everyone who comes into contact with me, right? Because your daughter felt it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was yeah. strong enough. It was strong enough for you that your daughter felt it and you didn't need to describe it, right? You didn't need to go, isn't the mountain beautiful? Isn't, doesn't the air <laughs> right. smell great? Is doesn't the warm car? Those, you didn't need to do that. Right. She's like, yeah, it's pretty good, right? Like, it's <laughs> like, like, she, <laughs> yeah, she fixed, right. she, right. And she didn't need to describe it either. 
but she acknowledged it. So that's, you know, so then it's like, okay, well, if that's my pursuit, then how do I want to have fun and create room for that mm -hmm. in my personal life, in my creative life, in my vocational life? How do I want to create more room for that, more room for me to have that, and more room for the people I work with to have that? Because everything else is just trying too hard, right? It's like trying to get a list done or this, yeah. you know, those things are all, those things are part of it, part of life, but they're not, there are a million, again, there are a million ways to get there. And yep. it just, it just counts on us being willing to accept that it, it, it just requires us to be present for it. We don't have to create it. We just have to be present for it. Yeah, that's, that is it. And I don't know. Yeah, I think seeing it in, in being, uh, being aware of it when it's there. I don't know if that's one of those things where it's, it, it kind of goes back to like, well, it's always there. You just have to have the wherewithal to acknowledge it. And, you know, maybe that is it, but yeah, I feel, I do feel like I'm, identifying that feeling more and more and I can recall it um you know it, yeah I can recall it in in places that I'm like okay here's this one that stood out one that stood out and one that stood out but um letting go and and thinking like maybe I can create it more too just by acknowledging it you know it's not necessarily that you're creating it it's that you're taking the time to go Oh yeah, it's here now too. Yeah, it is. It 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 is. It exists for us. It's available and we it is who we are. It is what we are. It is the reality of who we are. Not all the things we think, but it is that experience when we stop thinking and just kind of take it in. Right? Cuz then that's the satisfaction is like we don't need to manipulate it. Because exactly. it's there. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's perfect. Those moments are perfect. <laughs> yeah. Man, I feel like that might bring us in for a landing today. <laughs> I think it, so. I yeah. think this is enough. And this is everything is the title of this episode. I like it. I like it. <laughs> thank I you think so it's a, much. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that moment. It was a breakthrough in many multiple dimensions. Yeah. Well, and like, you know, I think you called out some really interesting breakthrough moments to, as well. And it's, it's neat. It's neat how it all kind of ties in. <laughs> yep. Um, well, thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Jamie. And uh, until oh, our next, well, next unconstrained <laughs> podcast next week. Perfect. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.